A mother leaves in the early morning hours for her job but never arrives. Avon, Indiana, March fifteenth, two 2019. Nadja Farrell. Nadja Farrell never showed up to her new job orientation in March of 2019. A month later, her foot was found in a retention pond 150 miles away. Nadja left for an early morning shift at a Panera Bread on the north side of Indianapolis. After never making it to work, her car was found in a shopping center less than a mile away. A month later, fishermen near Crown Point, Indiana found her severed foot. Nadja was the cornerstone of her family. She was in a long-term relationship and engaged to be married, but had no date, but no date had been set. She enjoyed spending time with her children as well as her nieces and nephews and always had a group of kids with her. She was happiest when she was spending time with them. It came as no surprise to her family when she decided to become a foster parent to three additional children. Nadja had been a stay-at-home mom when her children were young, but had recently taken a new job at Panera Bread, which would offer a bit more income and a schedule that worked around her children's school schedules. Her new job required her to be there at 5 a.m. On the day she went missing, it would have been her third day of orientation, but she never made it. Around 3 in the morning on March the 15th, Nadja Farrell vehicle is seen leaving her apartment complex on surveillance camera. She was last seen near her home near County Road 100 South and Dan Jones Road in Avon, Indiana, during the early morning hours. She never showed up for her shift at Panera Bread on West 86th Street, but it wasn't until she didn't show up to pick her sons up from school that day that her mom, Paula, became concerned. This this was an immediate red flag as Nadja was dependable, reliable, and would never miss picking her kids up. After attempting to contact her, they decided to call the police. The Indianapolis Metropolitan Police Department was notified and immediately began investigating. When they learned that Nadja was a Hendricks County residence, they transferred the case to the Avon Police Department a much smaller police department, and because it was the end of the day on Friday, the case was not assigned to a detective until Monday morning. The search for nausea was extensive and included aerial and ground searches across the city. Nearly two weeks later, her, t nearly two weeks later, her 2018 Nissan Altima was discovered in a shopping center near her work. Shortly after that, construction workers contacted police after they found some random papers and personal items near I-465 in Indianapolis. The media never reported what the items were, but Naja's sister, Jalisa, discovered that it was her ID and bank cards belonging to Naja. Well, she, she's seen on surveillance camera leaving her apartment area at 3.15 in the morning. Her shift at Panera Bread was scheduled to begin her orientation at 5 a.m. That's almost two full hours before she was to be there. It was around 18 miles from where she lived to the Panera Bread which would basically take 20, 20, 25 minutes, 30 maybe with traffic, but at 3.30 in the morning, I don't know what the traffic situation is like there. Um, there's a sea, and I'm just looking at the Google Maps, so I mean, I'm just seeing that there's a speedway. Um, I'm looking for any, like, gas stations. 
um, along that route. She may have stopped to get gas or pick up something. I don't know if she was a smoker. She may have stopped to pick up cigarettes or something like that. Um, I don't know if, if uh, I'll continue reading the story, but it's possible that someone may have come into contact with her. I wonder if she was seen on surveillance camera because you, you're passing by Target, Home Depot, Kroger. You're passing by quite a few stores along that route, Lowe's Home Improvement, um, Buffalo Wild Wings. I mean, there's lots of um, restaurants and stores that she would have had to pass by on her route. The fact that it was less than probably 30 minutes at best, and she left an hour and 45 minutes before she had to be there, is question, you know, makes me question, was it possible she was going to meet someone before she got there? And maybe that was what happened. I don't know. Let's read on and see what they have to say. In April of 2019, police got a call from the Crown Point Police Department in Indiana, about two hours away. Two fishermen at a pond off of I-65 had discovered human remains. A severed foot was pulled from the pond with a tattoo matching Nadja's. Her name. No other remains were found. After confirming the body part belonged to her through DNA, authorities launched a search of the pond and surrounding areas, but they did not find any additional clues. Since the last discovery of her remains, there has not been any new information or breakthroughs in her case. No other remains have been discovered. Well, the fact that the foot that was severed and placed in this pond, which I understand to be a retention pond, and that particular foot had her name on it, had a tattoo with her name on it, so... Someone wanted, I believe personally, it's just my personal thoughts, someone wanted that foot to be found to let people know to stop looking for this woman as a, as a living person. Um, retention ponds are used to hold and distribute rain runoff to help stop, to help prevent flooding. The basin is designed to manage stormwater runoff. So it's possible that the foot wasn't placed in the pond, but washed into the pond from this. If there had been any heavy rains, I would go back and check the weather reports around that time to see. Um, so it's possible that the foot wasn't placed in the pond, but ran, you know, washed down into that pond. If it was placed in the pond, then I would go back to my theory that it was placed there with the hopes that it would be found eventually with this tattoo on it. So people would say, okay, this is this lady's foot. This is from WRTV. This is dated March 15th of 2022. What happened to Nadja Farrell? Three years after her disappearance, the police department said somebody knows something. Well, of course somebody knows something. Nadja Farrell, age 30, of Avon, was last seen when she left for work, but she never made it there. Her car was found March the 26th in an abandoned... Um, her car was found abandoned. I, I believe, here's my theory, this is just theory number two that I have. Um, she's on her way to this job. She's left a little early, so it's either that she really wants to get there early so she can, you know, really get into this job and make a good impression, or maybe she did have arrangements to meet somebody. I'm sure the police would have pulled her cell phone records and 
checked for pings and that type of thing on her cell phone, um, they would have pulled any text messages and things like that if she was planning to meet anybody. Um, that's information they may have held on to. Or it could be that she stopped at a gas station, like I said, and came into contact with somebody and was overtaken. And her car was abandoned in this parking lot, you know, by whoever it was. This this is a quote from her mother, pa Paula Golson, said the circumstances around this were not normal. This is not normal for somebody's life to be taken that was not involved in anything illegal. She was not out there doing anything illegal. She was not living a life of chance. She was, you know, her family says that she was dedicated to her kids. Um, she was not someone who would just take off and be gone for days without any word about any of her past life or any anything that would indicate that she was involved in anything. Now, this is more recent. This is from this past week. Four years have passed since the disappearance of an Avon, Indiana woman. Wednesday marks, now this would have been the 15th, marks four years since her disappearance. Um, it basically goes on to tell the same information no other remains have been found like I said I'm sure the police have checked her phone records have checked her you know the fact that her identification cards and her ID and things like that were found tells me someone tossed those from the car was her bank card did anyone try to use it anywhere that would be something that I'm sure the police also checked so if they have any information about any of that, they're holding on to it. But it's been four years. Um, hopefully more remains will be discovered. I mean, how far could they have gotten? The car was found. I, my, my personal theory, and I could be way wrong here, but whoever she came into contact with on her way to work, or maybe someone in the parking lot of that Panera Bread. I don't know if they checked the cameras. I'm sure they did. Check the cameras of the Panera Bread parking lot. Probably stores and uh, businesses around the parking lot. And along the highway, along the roadway, going to this place. Um, it's very possible that they have but usually if they if if a person stops at, let's say for example she may have stopped at a grocery store or a gas station that would have been open at three thirty, four o'clock in the morning if they check the cameras around those and they found something and they see her coming in and out buying gas or uh, you know a cup of coffee or whatever she may have gone in there for they would have checked to see if anybody else was around, coming in and out at the same time. Um, what cars were coming in and out of the parking lot. Did anyone follow her out of the parking lot? You know, those are the things that sometimes the police will release. Just to say, do you recognize this car? Do you, was you in this area this time of morning? May you have seen something? If they've released anything like that, I couldn't find anything about it on here. So it's been four years, and this woman's case still is unsolved. And thanks for listening.